So now we're going to talk about polynomials, like it says in introduction. So what are polynomials? Poly meaning many, right? Poly means many, nomials, numbers, so many numbers. It's a multi-term equation, so uh, of the form you know, y equals f of x. Now, exclusively of the form a to the a, ax to the n plus bx to the n minus 1 plus cx to the n minus 2 plus and so on all the way to, I don't know, let's say we get to, you know, y x to the, well, maybe we shouldn't get to y, well, whatever, y x to the um, 1 and then plus z x to the 0, aka this. So it's basically a many, number, many numbered thing that is and has many terms. Um, there, the most basic form of polynomial that you know of is of the form ax plus b, which that's ax to the first plus bx to the zeroth, it's hard to see. Another one that's very popular is ax squared plus bx plus c, or a quadratic, also a type of polynomial. Continuity. Now, continuity, you for the most part have been dealing with graphs that are continuous. There are some that are discontinuous. Rational functions, if you remember, have things like asymptotes and all that fun stuff. But in general, continuity is defined as a graph has the same behavior at any given point as we come from the left to the right, left or the right of at that given point. So for instance, if I'm looking at this point here, then I say this is continuous because I'm trending towards this value and I'm trending toward this value and that value is also defined. Where what might not continuous look or what might not continuous look like? Well it could look like I've got a, you guessed it, hole in the graph, an undefined point. So I may be approaching the same value. Uh, there so happens to be a hole in this graph, so we'd say it's discontinuous. There's a discontinuity there. Other popular ways that discontinuities might occur is if we're trending towards different things as we come to the left and right. So we might go this way and this way, right? And it's also not defined then at that point. So even if we had a graph that was, say, we'll chop this up a little bit more here, right here. Um, if we have a graph that where we have a trend where it's going to negative infinity this way and going to negative infinity this way, even though they're both going to negative infinity, they're both trending the same way, there's still this discontinuity, this hole in the graph. So continuity largely talks about holes in the graph. Or another way to look at it is if you were to take a, look, a little car and drive it along your graph, so there's my little car, right? It's a horrible little car. But if I uh, actually drive said car along said graph, then little car does not plummet to his death, ah, um, or fall through a hole, or something like that, okay? That's continuity. Polynomial form. Polynomial form is of the form ax to the n plus bx to the n minus 1 plus cx to the n minus 2, and so on. So standard polynomial form. Factored form has to do with, you guessed it, factors. What are factors? y equals, so it could be the form ax minus m. Hey, wait, we talked about this with, the only difference is you might have more than one, that's what comes after, o, p, right? Because polynomials could have powers that are higher. Now on that note, we define the degree or power of a polynomial, and we pretty much exclusively use the term degree as the highest power of the polynomial, of the polynomial. Now, the reason that we try to write things pol, uh, oops, the reason we try to spell correctly is so as not to confuse people, but um, the reason that we write polynomials in standard form is, you're right, you could say f of x equals 2x cubed plus 7x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus 2x plus 1, but that makes it a little bit hard to figure out what degree is. We try to put this so we have the 7x to the fourth, the highest degree first. Now this particular polynomial, no matter where you put that, the degree of that would be 4, okay? Now, 
odd versus even degree polynomials. So let's look at some basic examples here. So we could say we're looking at y equals ax plus b. That's the most basic. That'd be a first degree polynomial, some say linear, right? Um, and in general, that shape, let's hope you know by now, would be something like this, let's say, if it has a positive slope, okay? It goes the other way if it has a negative slope, but that's not what we're going to concern ourselves with yet, quite yet. Now, uh, the next most favorite is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Remember, that's b to the first, that's x to the zeroth. But this is a second degree or quadratic uh, polynomial. So polynomials is like an umbrella term for some stuff we've seen already. And it's most basic form. We know that a quadratic looks like this, yes? Ready, set. We're going to get the horse out and flog it a bit here. It's just an expression. Don't panic. No horses were actually harmed in the making of this video. AX cubed plus BX squared plus CX plus you guessed it. So there's a pattern here. We always start with A and we end with whatever letter of the alphabet. You know, it's one more than, right? There's four terms and the highest degree here is three. So we know that the most basic cubic model um, has, looks like, graphs like, this, right? Now we talked about n behavior, or at least we started to, with respect to um, quadratics. So it turns out every graph has n behavior, and that is not to do with, with um, well, it is to do with what the ends of this thing are doing. So we would in general say, and we're going to kind of go we'll color code here, we're going to say as x goes to, and I'm going to do this a little bit differently, positive or negative infinity. In other words, I'm going to combine these mathematician lazy, remember, such that we have a single statement. So as x goes to positive infinity, something happens. As x goes to negative infinity, something happens. Now this is how this is read. As x goes to positive infinity, that is if I'm going across the top here, then y is going where? Well, x goes to positive, y is going to positive also. Infinity, that is off that way, right? These are just directions, positive, positive, good? As x goes to negative infinity, then the negative direction, then y is also going in the negative direction. Top, top, bottom, bottom. So this is the same as saying x goes to positive infinity, y goes to positive infinity, and x goes to negative infinity, y goes to negative infinity. So in other words, this single statement is the equivalence to this. Now, quadratics, like we talked about, no matter which way we go. So in this particular case, where's y headed? Well, y is always headed in the positive direction, right? In that case, right? So this is an odd degree. This is odd, right? That's right. One's an odd number, odd degree. And this is even degree. Now, then we get to our, this is another one we know, which is an odd degree polynomial. Now, I would argue that this is very similar to a linear equation, incredibly similar with respect to the end behavior. Meaning, if I look at this statement, and I always started off positive to negative, um, what is y doing? Well, as x goes to positive, y is going to positive, right? And as x goes to negative, so top to top, bottom to bottom. In other words, this end behavior here is the same as this other odd degree. Now I haven't put this in here, and you may or may not believe me, but if I were to pick a different color and write a quartic, 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 well I'll write that word down here in just a sec. Quartic is a word for a fourth degree polynomial. Quintic, fifth, sextic, Heptic, optic, anyway. No one does that. They see, you know, sixth, seventh, eighth degree, whatever. So CX squared, but quartic is something that gets used a lot. So it might probably be a good idea to know that word. Um, this is quartic, quartic, right? It's not icky. Um, but that's a fourth degree polynomial. So it's even, right? Now the most basic even degree polynomial would just be X to the fourth power which if you think carefully about what x to the fourth power would look like, I mean, it would be any, well, as a matter of fact, let's, let's be honest, it's not a parabola, but it's awfully a lot like it, which means that the end behavior is 
looks very similar to any other even degree. So if we continue this into infinity, as in keep going with this, uh, we, a fifth degree would have n behavior that is the opposite. That is, one goes one way, the other goes the other way. That is, they're going away from each other. Um, versus an even degree where both ends of the graph go in the same direction. The reason I say this is because it is possible to reflect these. So you could have n behavior. You could have n behavior uh, such that x goes to positive or negative infinity, uh, y goes to negative infinity. There are certain even degree polynomials where that open down. Think, you know, quadratic that has been reflected, right? So in general, um, in general, for odd degree polynomials, the y, the n behavior of y goes in opposite directions. And for even degree polynomials, polynomials, the end behavior of y goes in the same direction. So to illustrate that, there are two possible ways that you could write the end behavior for an odd degree. You could have either x goes to positive or negative infinity, and you could have as x gets larger, y also gets larger, and as x gets smaller, y gets smaller. Or you could have, and we always write this this way, right? Positive or negative for the first one. It's the second one that adapts. What if as x goes gets bigger, that is we're heading off here to the right, y goes down, and it goes negative first, and it goes positive. But either way, they're going to go opposite directions. As compared to quadratics, uh, where we have the same behavior, so as x goes to positive or negative infinity, y either goes to positive infinity, or, right, as x goes to positive or negative infinity, y goes to negative infinity. So those are our options, depending on whether or not it's been reflected. In this case, these would be the reflected uh, models. That is, the value of A is negative. So these would be the reflected models here. That's not worth memorizing, per se. It's get come to common sense if you think about um, how graph transformations work, because it ends up being all the same. All right, zeros. Now, if you've got a quadratic or a quartic or whatever, right? Um, you can break this down into a series of factors. So let's say we're looking at a quartic. Uh, let's say it's x minus 2 times x minus 3 times x minus 4 times x minus 5. Now first off, how do I know that's quartic or fourth degree? Well, quartic is a fancy way of saying that. Well, if I were to multiply this out, and I'm not asking you to do that, the highest, the most times that I'd take x and multiply it by another x would be four times. I'd have an x times x times x, which means the highest degree would be x to the fourth. So this is a n, right? So the degree of this is four. How many zeros does this have? Why it has four. So for instance, we know that this thing is crossing the axis. These are factors or roots, right? We'll talk about that here in just a sec. But we know it's hitting at 2, we know it's hitting at 3, we know it's hitting at 4, and we know it's hitting at 5. <laughs> Which means that this graph has a couple of ways. It, now remember, because it's quartic, it means either both ends go up or both ends go down, right? But let's say it's go, they're both going up, right? That would mean it'd have to hit here, 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 and here, right? So this is the most number of times that this could cross. Is it possible to have a quartic that never crosses? That is, doesn't have any zeros. In other words, you couldn't write it in a factored form. Why, well, sure, you could have a quartic that's just like that, right? Or you could even have this. I mean, some call that a W shape, right? You could have the same thing. It's still a W shape, but it still does not hit the axis because it's been shifted down. But in this case, the most number of zeros 
is uh, n, where n is the degree. Extrema, think max and min. By the way, maxima is the plural of maximum. We don't say maximums, maxima. Uh, we don't say minimums, we say minima. Well, at the very least, you're going to see that a lot, so let's make sure that we're aware of that. So we have maxima and minima. But in any event, what's the most numbers of that? So look at these, looking at this, there's a couple of absolute or global maxes, and there's a lot of relative ones. We got one, two, three at most. Um, we could have as few as one, right? So we have three here, which is one less than the degree. Fourth degree, three extrema, okay? There's patterns to this as we go along. What that means is for a fifth power model, you'd have at most five zeros and at most four extrema. Now, if we're talking about a fifth power model, we know that the end behavior would have to be the opposite. So let's say it's here and here, right? You could have five. One, two, three, four, five roots. And look, one, two, three, four, which is one less than five extrema. Now, solutions happen when f of x, that is the y value, is equal to zero. Zeros are also when f of x equals zero, and we say that x equals whatever those zeros are, where n and m are some numbers, right? So in this case, you know, x is 2, 3, 4, 5. A factor would be of the form x minus n, where n is a 0, or solution, okay? And then last but not least, an x-intercept technically would be of the form some n value comma 0, because it has to, it's a coordinate, okay? That can get a little bit fussy, but there it is. So that's our intro to polynomials and the various characteristics.